insert the filter holder on top of the VFC device, making sure that the gasket is in between the VFC and the filter holder. Lower it down inside the shelter, making sure not to damage the pressure tap on the side of the filter holder. The next step is to connect the clear piece of tubing to the side port of the filter holder pressure tap. Next, you will need to remove the frame on top of the filter holder and replace it with the TE5035 adapter plate. Make sure that the four black plastic washers are on top of the 5035 adapter plate. With the adapter plate installed, install the TE5028 calibrator. The valves on the manometer have to be open. To do this, turn them counterclockwise and remove them and then put them back on by one thread. Perform this operation for both manometers and all four valves. Connect the black piece of tubing from the calibration kit to the manometer. Either valve can be used. One is open to the atmosphere, the other one will have the piece of tubing on it. The other end is connected to the TE5028 calibrator. Next is the clear piece of tubing with the male tube fitting on the end of it. Connect that to the manometer, and then the male part will go into the bulkhead fitting on the side of the shelter. Now it is time to plug the sampler in. With the timer in the off position, when you plug it in, it should not come on. Flip the switch to the right to activate the timer. The time cord is the left hand cord on the timer and it needs to be plugged into the blower motor. When plugging it in and the motor moves like that, you will need to make sure it's tight. Reach up in there and tighten it and make sure all things are tight. The next step is to take the manometer readings. The left manometer is hooked up to the calibrator and the right manometer is hooked up to the side port on the sampler. In our example, the first leg of the left manometer went down 1.9 and it went up 2.2 for a total of 4.1. The sampler manometer went down 3.2 and up 3.3 for a total of 6.5 inches. As you can see, for each point, I am turning the knob on top of the calibrator just a little bit each time. The manometer for the calibrator is not moving hardly at all, but the one on the right for the sampler is moving very freely. If you can get a half inch on each side for the sampler reading, that is considered a point. US EPA recommends a five point calibration. In our example, we have decided to do seven points just to have a few extra points just in case something's not linear. Go to tish-env.com. Click on calibration. Go down and click on calibration worksheets. The fifth one down is TE5170V. 
with G Factor. Go up to enabling editing. Put in the date that you're calibrating it. Go down and put in the serial number for your TSP BFC device. Put in the G factor for that BFC device. Put in the serial number of your TE5028 calibrator. Put in the slope of the calibrator, which is the M. Enter the intercept for the calibrator, which is the B. And the calibration due date. This is one year from the date on the calibrator. Next is to enter the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. This converts to degrees Celsius and then degrees Kelvin. Then the barometric pressure in inches of mercury and it is converted to millimeters of mercury. 4.1 was the first point, 4.1 was the second point, 4.1 was the third point, 4.1 was the fourth point, and 4.1 was the fifth point, all for the calibrator. The next column is for the sampler. It was 6.5, 7.2, 7.7, 8.3, and 9.2 inches of water. As you can see, all the percent differences are under 4%, which makes it a good calibration. This concludes the calibration of a TE-5170V volumetric flow controlled TSP air sampler.